let's be honest here. Hamna having arguably one of the best builds in the ring next to Shota and Sonata, right? Mm-hmm. So, like, uh, and, and like, he was greased up. Like, this guy was slick. Like, well, yeah, so much so, he got out of the paradise look. Yeah, that was the big spot, I think, of, of the whole thing was mm. him just being able to escape Paradise Lock because he greases. And then if you notice Naito, when he came over and was hitting him, he went, ew, and like wiped it on his the shirt. the whole time, yeah. yeah. Gentlemen, welcome to Pedro Wrestling Review or NJPW Pedro Wrestling Review. I am your co-host Andre C. Right over here is my co-host Melba. How you doing today, Melba? You know, it's a continuation of this weird, weird week where it's like bad stuff is happening, and then good stuff kind of evens it out by the end of the night. It's very interesting how this week has kind of been going. But thank yeah. goodness I got my puppy back home. I'm happy about that. Mm-hmm. Um, how are you doing today, my friend? I'm having a great day. I had a long day at work, and now I'm home and what, talking some wrestling. Watched the great uh, new beginning in Osaka show over the last couple of days, which we're going to mm-hmm. talk about. But before we get into that, I want to uh, thank everybody for tuning in. Uh, please like the video, subscribe down below, hit that bell, and uh, also uh, comment, please. We get a lot of great comments mm-hmm. from listeners so please the more you comment the more the more we want to talk about so please uh share it out we want to we, we, we just want to talk we want to talk to you and then share and, the, and share the video as much as you can too <laughs> <laughs> and i also want to give a big shout out to our sponsor rogue energy uh qr code down there in the bottom right hand corner mel, mel always points at it uh qr uh or also all or, or go to rogueenergy.com and use the code OLEPOS for 10% off your order. But we are going to get into this. It's the new beginning in Osaka. Uh, absolutely phenomenal show. Like there was the two last weekend, and then this one this weekend, uh, this past weekend, just abs- three phenom- absolutely phenomenal shows in this tour. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. 100%. 100%. The last one, I mean, I was like, how are they going to step up from this one? But who? They did. What's that phrase you say, man? Yeah. Um, Cowabunga, dude. What? <laughs> I don't remember. Boy, howdy. Come on. Oh, boy, howdy. Okay. I have. I don't know. <laughs> you've got a few. You've been, you've been dropping a few. I'll give you that. It's just random shit that come off the top of my head. <laughs> And we have a tag team match to start the night. Mm-hmm. Is the United Empire's Aaron Hanari and the Great Ocon taking on uh, the team I've named Lubo? What the heck? Lubo. Oh Oscar my Lube. goodness. Oscar Loibe and no, uh, Torio. Yeah, Loibe. Sorry, Loibo. Whatever. Yeah. Lubo sounds funnier. Oh my God. Neither one of those sound great. <laughs> oh goodness. Of, uh, the team of Oscar Lube and Toriano. I don't. I didn't take much for this one. Um, I'll just say this: Khan likes to choke people with braid, especially Yano, because every time those guys get in a ring, he chokes Yano with his braid. It's just a simple factor. I mean, I guess we know his kink, right? Mm-hmm. Yano so. likes tying people up with his tape. Great Khan likes choking people with his hair. I mean, these guys are really a match made in in King Kevin. There. Not gonna. Um, not, I'm not king shaming. I'm not gonna king shame for it. Like it's. I'm not. There's no king shame here. But yeah, I'll say. Um, oh my goodness. The, the, the friggin' goat chops. Kevin literally mentions the line. He's tenderizing the meat. I when he said that, I'm like, I, all I could think of was you. <laughs> I heard that too, and I'm like, oh, how dare he? But he didn't say titties. He said Didn't the meat. Say titty, so you, you keep you keep it there, Charlton. We'll we'll be we'll be good. Um, something I wanted to know. Uh, note I found very amusing about Loibe. Um, have you noticed his height and like? Oh, geez, gigantic. The, the differential in in the length of his legs versus the torso. Got he long looks, legs. Yeah, I was. I wrote down. He looks like that stereotypical comic book character 
with like the big long stacked legs you look up to him and he's just sitting there triumphant with his little cape flapping in the wind i i actually no edna mode said no capes um so we're gonna do no capes but like i i thought that was amazing and for me with his now um a little bit length of hair there he's kind of looking like a superman there i'm, I'm pretty uh, happy with that um i did have a question about uh, like you know i love the united empire obviously um why did hanare fist yano's booty hole i don't know i literally wrote that down his con sat on his head on top turkel turnbuckle and and I punched him in the ass. That's what I wrote. But it's just just to fuck with Yano, I guess. Did you hear what Chris Charlton said, though? Oh, my goodness. With the commentary with this man. That was right in the bum. So proper. So British. Right in the bum. Here we are sitting here, you know, trashy North American. He just fisted his ass. <laughs> and here's Chris Charlton. That was right in the bum. You, you said fisted the ass. I just said <laughs> punched him in the ass. Because <laughs> that's what it was. That's a very different thing. <laughs> I mean, I saw what I saw. And I had, unfortunately, I, I a camera right on Yano's butt to see that happen. Who I this? didn't see what you're saying we saw. But <laughs> uh, yes, but in the did. end, Harunari plants Lube with the rampage and gets, the, uh, mm. and gets, but does a kneel on the chest to get the win. Yeah, yeah. It actually looked like it cranked Lube, um, Loibe under the jaw. He was so he got so much height on that. That looked nasty. I actually thought that was going to be the end of it, but when he followed it up with the rampage, I was like, that was a nasty scary. It was still cool, but it was a nasty scary. Yeah, very much so. So we mm. move on to an eight man tag, and I thought we were done with the whole Naito Umino thing, but I guess they want to continue it for a little while longer. And I'm just like, it still does, yeah. Ugh. I don't know. doesn't seem to care the heck less. He's almost ignoring know. him now. Shota's almost like, la, 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 like a little kid poking. Daddy, look at me. Daddy, look at me. Daddy, look at me. And Naito's just like, I'm going to brogue kick you soon. To me, the story of this match was Sonata versus Hanma for, for to be the NJPW world model. That was the story of this match. <laughs> that is... Kevin, Kevin was talking about it, and mm -hmm. I'm, I'm all in. That 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 is the story of this match, man. Okay. Okay. I mean, let's be honest here. Hamna having arguably one of the best builds in the ring next to Shota and Sonata, right? Mm -hmm. So, like, uh, and, and, like, he was greased up. Like, this guy was slick. Like, well, yeah, so he's, much so, he got out of the paradise look. Yeah, that was the big spot, I think, of, of the whole thing was mm. him just being able to escape Paradise Lock because he greases. And then if you notice Naito, when he came over and was hitting him, he went, ew, and like wiped it on his the shirt. The whole time, yeah. Yeah. But it, uh, it was a fun little eight-man tag in the end. Mm. Uh, great suicide dive by Bushi to Umino on the outside, and Hiromu hits the time bomb on Taguchi to get the mm. win. You don't see so much of Tiger Mask in this one. I honestly, I was going to say, I forgot he was in the match at one point. I don't think he was ever, active. I don't think he ever legally tagged in. He did for a little bit, a little oh. bit at the beginning after Hamna. Oh, okay. I just don't yeah. remember. I have, I have nothing written about his time in the ring. Yeah, it, it was not long and, and, and prosperous. <laughs> but I think um, the big news coming out of this match is the post-match. Like more than oh, anything, yeah, it's Hiromu, yeah. For Hiromu, Leo Rush pops up on the screen, uh, and Chal is got dude. You could see that scar right mm -hmm. here from where he got busted open. That was that mm -hmm. that looked rough. Mm -hmm. Um, and Leo Rush challenges Hiromu for the junior title. Hiromu accepts, and officially, this match has been made for the mm -hmm. New Japan Cup Finals. It has, it has. I'm excited for that. I'm and. I'm not the biggest fan of bad child's attitude, but I'm a big fan of big of um bad child's like in ring uh, performance mm -hmm. and ability. So that's gonna be a fun match. And Hiromu's a little spastic right now. I think that they could work some good story going into this one. Oh, I um, think I think they have a great match. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, um, something I wanted to note in the beginning of this one actually was as the intros were happening, 
um, what kind of started the shenanigans with uh, Hontai there, specifically with um, Shota Umino there and uh, Mr. Taguchi. Um, Shota dancing and clapping along to to Naito's music and Taguchi playing a Casio, like an inflatable Casio, dun, 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 along with Naito's music was just... I absolutely, and he went to every side of the ring, and again Naito paying him no, no mind because he's Alan Gubernable and he just doesn't care. Um, I don't know why Taguchi has like taken on mimicking Bushi, um, before the beginning of the match, um, but like it really brings me life. I love it because Bushi's getting so frustrated with it. He's going up and down and up and down and folding his arms and unfolding his arms and adjusting his mask and just. It's really, really funny um, to watch. But Shota also doing the same thing to Naito, seemingly, when he was derobing, um, whipping his stuff off just like Naito, like trying to get Naito's attention. Um, a- as you mentioned, this is definitely not a um, saga for Naito that's over. Shota seems to be that little puppy dog that's going to be just jumping in front of him perpetually until he gets pet and... I, I kind of like the story and the entertainment value of it. Yeah, we'll um, see. We'll see. Yeah. Other than that, that's that's all I got on this guy. This was a fun yeah. one. So Two move on. in the crowd that I saw, did you see? Two. Two. I, I don't pay attention to the crowd. <laughs> I don't look for Bushi. That's your, that's your job. Uh, move on <laughs> to the next match evening in the junior heavyweight division. It's Taiji Ishimori taking on Master Wado. Like, this was very much a, sh- a match about... Uh, uh, about Ishimori working Wado's shoulder. Mm-hmm. What this like um, whole match was about. Um, there, like his handspring flip kick that Ishimori does. If you actually watch it, he kicked the shoulder. Like he mm-hmm. usually, it looks like mm-hmm. a kick to the head. He legitimately kicked for the shoulder. Uh, mm-hmm. There was the La Mystica at one point that he brought Wado down, slamming that shoulder in and really working that shoulder. Mm-hmm. Um, Dude, and he hit the he hit the nasty German, as we like to call it now. Yeah, um, it, it, that sliding German out, and then immediately pulls him out and runs him shoulder first into the post. And then mm-hmm. the biggest spot for me in the match was the Rocky Maivia style shoulder breaker that yeah. issue where he hit up, like pulled him in the power slam position and dropped yeah. him. Into that shoulder. Oh, I was so happy. I'm like, dude. Like it, mm. it made me think of 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 the rock before mm. he became the rock, right? Because mm. that was his finisher. And I just like, ah. But yeah, the, I think these two had a phenomenal match. Um, but like I think Ishimori really stole the win here, hitting that high knee, the Lariat, and then getting the bloody cross. Mm-hmm. getting that win i think he really kind of stole it out from Watto there at the end i mean and Watto fought hard this entire mm. match these guys were all over the place um i i something I, I hate saying it but like i really do feel that ishimori he again a tremendous tremendous in-ring competitor and wrestler but i feel that he really does struggle a little bit with his um I don't want to say the character, but like he feels less animated when he's in a singles kind mm-hmm. of style as opposed to when he's in a, a tag team or a, a mixed up like multi tag me team. I don't need um, him to be animated though. Like he, he I, I need to get rid of this That's goddamn I character. <laughs> I do. Goddamn <laughs> character is what I need. I mean, for me, I, I like that well-roundedness. Um, when when I don't get that kind of character work or development, it, it, for me, it starts to feel more or less um, like a wrestling match and a show and more of a spot fest, and I don't want that. That's why I moved away from North American-style wrestling into the Japanese style. So um, and that being said, though, I am under the understanding that that does need to start to be adapted if they are going to start doing transitional stuff. But that being said... North America start adapting some less spotty shit. <laughs> I, I I 100% agree with you. Don't worry, I like some of the spot matches, but like you watch the elite now in the trios matches, and it's just high spot to high spot. Watch that last tri- trios defense they had. Oh, that was like a high spot best. Yeah, yeah. See, and that's what I don't like. I like to, I like to have that well roundedness. I like to have those high spots. Don't get me wrong. I mean, that's tremendous as athleticism that you need to put in there. That's what drew us into Will Ospreay, right? But 
it needs to be balanced. You need to find that proper balance with it. And and for me, with Ishimori, without that development, I, I feel, again, it, it almost becomes spotty, which I know is not him. That's mm-hmm. not what he's capable of at all. Um, but you're absolutely right about more. stealing that win. Yeah. I definitely thought Watto had it. Yeah, and the, there was a great spot from Watto. He hit the... Uh... The high angle German that uh, Chris mentioned was a uh, Sukekake German. It was a, uh, he's, yeah. a, he's an older wrestler, but just mm-hmm. that high angle and just driving him down the way he did. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Just gorgeous. I love that German. Wow. I love that he's bringing that. He's incorporating classic moves into his set more than just mm-hmm. what he currently has. It, I, I've never seen him hit that German before, and it just looked mm-hmm. absolutely phenomenal. I, I'll say this. I'm a little disappointed by the finish because I really thought this was the start of Watto moving towards best of Super juniors to maybe win it and be the guy that takes from Hiromu. But maybe I'm wrong. Maybe. I don't know. I, I just want to. Yeah. I think Watto has something special in him, and I just want to see him succeed. Mm. I mean, he's already taken such progress, um, starting with his look, especially. Like, when he first debuted, the blue hair, oh. the, the blue and pink um, pants and, and jacket, it was it was no bueno. No, The grand no. master. Yeah, it, it was not good. It was not a good look. It was not a good deal. It was a... It, it it was overshadowed it overshadowed his talent now we're finally starting to see his talent because he's kind of matured into this look um we know how japan likes to do their stories and their templates for their stories um just because he did lose this match doesn't mean that he can't go oh i know but it's just... and totally win it he's he could be that cinderella story to kind of come out of it you never know no, that tournament's next month in stardom. The Cinderella tournament's next month in stardom. <laughs> <Come on>. Wow, wow. <laughs> Good one, though. Good one. But 